In this video, we're learning about diffusion. So we'll cover what diffusion is, the two main types of diffusion across cell membranes, and finally, the key factors affecting the rate of diffusion. Let's start with what diffusion is. We can define diffusion as the net movement of particles from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. Let's break this definition down a bit to understand it better. If we have two areas separated by a membrane with lots of particles on the left, but fewer particles on the right, then the left would be an area of higher concentration and the right would be an area of lower concentration. Then even though individual particles move randomly in all directions, the overall movement, on average, is from high to low concentration. And we refer to this as the net movement. When particles move from a high to low concentration, we describe this as happening down or along a concentration gradient. Eventually, they reach equilibrium. And at this point, particles are evenly distributed so that there are approximately the same number of particles on either side of the membrane, even though they are still individually still moving around. Another important thing to remember is that diffusion is a passive process, which means it doesn't require any energy input from the cell. The particles just naturally move around due to their own kinetic energy. Next, let's take a look at the two main types of diffusion across cell membranes. Simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. Starting with simple diffusion, in this process, small and non-polar molecules like oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuse directly across cell membranes. These molecules are small enough to fit through the spaces between the phospholipids in the membrane, and because they're nonpolar, they can dissolve in the hydrophobic core of the bilayer in order to move through it and out the other side of the membrane. There are some molecules that can't diffuse by simple diffusion through a cell membrane, though. Some examples here are polar molecules, which are hydrophilic, so are repelled by the nonpolar hydrophobic phospholipid tails, and then also larger molecules because they can't fit between the phospholipids. However, molecules like these can sometimes use facilitated diffusion instead. And in this case, these polar or large molecules use specific proteins to move across the cell membrane. There are two types of proteins that might be involved. Channel proteins or carrier proteins. Channel proteins form pores in the membrane that transport substances like certain ions allowing them to pass through the cell membrane without interacting with the phospholipids directly. Carrier proteins work a bit differently though. First, the molecule binds to the carrier protein, then the carrier protein changes shape, and finally, it releases the molecule on the other side of the membrane. It's worth noting at this point though, that there are some substances that can't diffuse across cell membranes at all, even by facilitated diffusion. For example, molecules that are far too large to fit into channel or carrier proteins, like starch, or substances with the same charge as the inside of the protein channels. For instance, if this protein channel had a negative charge, negatively charged ions would be repelled by it and so couldn't move through it. Finally then, let's explore the key factors affecting the rate of diffusion across cell membranes. The first factor we need to consider is temperature, because higher temperatures increase the kinetic energy of particles, so these particles move faster, which then increases the rate of diffusion. The next factor is the concentration gradient, where a steeper gradient means there's a bigger difference in concentration either side of the membrane, which also increases the rate of diffusion from the area where the particles are more concentrated to the area where the particles are less concentrated. The surface area of the membrane is another key factor, because a large surface area means more particles can cross at the same time, so this increases the rate of diffusion as well. And then lastly, the number of carrier or channel proteins can affect the rate of diffusion, because more proteins means there are more pathways for molecules to move through the cell membrane, and this increases the rate of facilitated diffusion specifically. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam-style questions, and past papers. 
and we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.